Hi, and welcome to Bloody Good Reads. I am your host, Mark Goddard, and we're going back to the crime genre, a, uh, a little favourite of mine. It's a guilty pleasure, really, and it's a little bit different from the horror and the thrillers that we do generally. But this week's guest has gotten up very early for us this, this morning. It's um, the second time we've had somebody from kind of Australia, New Zealand area on the podcast and i know that it's probably a really bad time to get him up in the morning seven o'clock but <laughs> this week's guest uh, is another amazing author from um Render books her sam shepherd series has been thrilling readers for a very very long time and her brand new book expectant uh, came out in february of this year so welcome to the podcast van der sim thank you mark and i do forgive you for getting me up this hour of the morning <laughs> I'm so used to doing it in American authors on the podcast. It's lunchtime for them, normally like nine o'clock for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we forget about that daylight savings, which is at the annoying time over here. <laughs> well, I have two cups of tea on board, so we're, we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> good choice. Um, again, thank you for coming to the podcast. So what we like to do here on Bloody Good Reads is force authors to pick three books they love because I, I like to challenge people that way. However... Before we get on to your amazing career and your free book choices, what I like to ask guests every time is how did they get into the crime genre? I've always loved to read, and as a child, I just kind of assumed I'd write books um, when I was a, when I was a grown up, and no one told me otherwise, so I did. And when it came time to actually thinking about what I wanted to write, um, I knew I loved reading historic fiction and I knew I loved reading crime fiction. But at that time in life, I had a six-month-old baby and a two-year-old. So doing the research that was really required to be able to do historic fiction well was a little bit out of my league, <laughs> about it by reach, you know, with a, accompanying toddlers who spill stuff. And, you know, archivists and librarians really don't like <laughs> messy noisy children around their precious collections uh, so crime writing came about as an entirely pragmatic choice really because at that stage the research was far more accessible uh, my husband's stepdad was a former police detective so I had someone in the family that I could quiz about details or questions and things like that so it just came down to being practical and pragmatic um, but no regrets absolutely no regrets I, I love writing crime fiction and I'm so delighted that I did head into this genre but yeah it does make me think you know maybe one day a historic crime fiction we'll see hey, it's, it's very popular over here <laughs> awesome so what was your reading habits growing up um was you quite an avid read I'm assuming Again, you're saying you're quite an avid reader when you're younger, but what kind of stuff was you reading over there? Because obviously in the UK, we have our, our general same kind of books. So what kind of more Australian New Zealand wise is kind of the popular books growing up? Probably very similar to what you have in the UK, very influenced by UK books and publications, um, you know, your Enid Blyton's, um, your Famous Fives and all that kind of books. Um, I was also a great lover of um, all things medieval. So I also loved like T.H. White's The Sword and the Stone, um, Mary Stewart's Crystal Cave series of books, um, and also a good dosage of fantasy. I love Terry Brooks and The Sword of Shannara. Do you notice there's a sword theme happening here, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> so um, that, that was very much my, my jam growing up. Um, but I did also, in my teens, really enjoy reading the um, Elizabeth Peters series of books about Amelia Peabody, who was a, a very intrepid woman ahead of her time, solving mysteries in Egypt and things like that. And that ended up being very influential on what I write because some of those characteristics of uh, her fabulous character, Amelia, um, came through a wee bit in my character, Sam Shepard. So it felt very much like you know, what you do read when you were younger stays with you for a long time and can influence what you do later on. Um, so I'm very, very pleased that I did read those books. I also read an awful lot of nonfiction and, and still do to this day as well. So um, yeah, they, they would have been my my favourite books over the years. And then um, a little later, yeah, discovered um, more 
horror genre if you mentioned mm. him right in the introduction your horror so Dean Koontz and Stephen King featured very very <laughs> intensely in my reading and it has about 80 percent of my guests <laughs> <laughs> funny that yeah, sure. What does it say about it? What does it do to our minds? You are what you read, and we read twisted, dark stuff. Hmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but we're the happiest people. It's strange. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, what is the crime genre? They're quite popular in New Zealand because I'm not because I know horror. It's very kind of base in a lot of places in Australia because I've had guests on from over that way, but I'm not sure really about New Zealand, but. Is crime quite popular over there like it is in the UK or? Very much so. Um, I would say crime would be one of the most popular genres um, in New Zealand that is read. Uh, New Zealanders in general I seem to read quite uh, broadly. But in a totally informal and unacademic survey of my friends, most of them read crime <laughs> fiction and we're always discussing um, crime fiction amongst amongst other books as well. Uh, and we do have um, there are a lot of fabulous crime writers here too. Um, I wish that we had access to more Australian crime fiction. Um, as you said, mm. you've read some Australian guests and they've got some amazing crime fiction writers um, there. But and, and they do... Their books do come across the Tasman um, over to us as well. That are, no, I think uh, between Australia and New Zealand, the crime fiction writers and what they can offer is incredible. Not that I'm biased. No, no. Because <laughs> it's, it's probably one of the more popular genres in the UK as well. I mean, I've always said horror and, fr- and, and crime have a very thin line between the two because it, it mm. moulds into, into each other quite well. But crime has always been a very, very popular genre, especially with more casual readers as well. I, I have always said I actually quite enjoy crime more than horror a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of in, in some of the stuff I've written, like Mark Villanen is it's a huge um, part of my my uh, my reading kind of from an adult age, and his his stuff is pretty much like horror in some in some cases. So it's nice to know that we're not the only country; it's pretty much just a huge crime place. <laughs> no, and I think, you know, as a reader, one of the reasons I do love reading it is because it is the epitome of human drama, really, isn't it? Mm. You know, you have these awful situations where um, people are in peril, people have died, people are going to die, uh, and just how that ripples through their families, through their communities and everything like that. Um, you know, it's such drama. Um, and and there's also that strange, vicarious comfort of sitting in bed safely locked within your house, <laughs> reading all these terrible, dark things happening to other people um, <laughs> and, and feeling safe doing that. I don't know. You, you, you've got, got a book about home invasion, which is one of my uh, favourite horror genres, but I still don't want to <laughs> imagine a brutal home invasion. Yeah, sorry about that. But I will, but, but I, but I will read it. <laughs> okay, sorry, not sorry. Um, hey, I, I, I'll still read it. Um, reading up kind of a lot of the synopsis is about your, like, like with your book, what I find it matches very, very similar to the UK market compared to the American market, because the American crime fiction isn't as dark in a way as a lot of the stuff that we have in the UK and from reading back to your books um, in, in New Zealand as well. So... It's a very kind of matching styles. It's, it's quite nice to see because uh, if you read the back of your book and didn't read New Zealand, you wouldn't think New Zealand. You'd think <laughs> dark, gritty British kind of crime. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird, <laughs> but it's, it's good. I like it. It's interesting what you say about your United States crime fiction not being as um, dark. I haven't read a lot of... Um... American crime fiction so you'd have to give me some recommendations <laughs> very little I don't actually get on with it too much I mean um Kiss the Girls was where it was very good um but generally I tend to stick to British because it's a lot darker <laughs> but I just said about me or really to me that one well I'll encourage um, you to read more New Zealand then I definitely will but what we do we'll before we get into kind of how you started off in your writing career and about your amazing Sam Shepard character in the series what we like to do here on Blanket Reads, as I said before, 
is force authors to pick three books that they love. Um, it's a hard job, and people hate me for it. But <laughs> what is your first bloody good read you brought along today? Um, well, I couldn't help myself because, you know, I have to pitch out for the Kiwis, <laughs> the New Zealanders out there. So of the course. first book I have... Um, going to bring I've brought along is called To the Sea by a New Zealand writer called Nikki Crutchley and one of the reasons I chose this book is because it just made me feel so intensely uncomfortable um it was yeah it is in a crime genre and um just the situation that goes on and the actions and choices of people just left me feeling quite scared wormy and not happy um so I thought you know I had a really strong emotional response to this book <laughs> uh, and it's, it was one of those books where I don't know if I could say that I enjoyed it but because I didn't enjoy it and had such a response to it I loved it does that make sense mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> and um it's a book that um has a, a place a look at as almost like a character in its own right. It's a very central to this family and this place at, um, overlooking the Pacific Ocean and you get the wildness of the environment uh, and the intergenerational, um, I'll say, sickness as in not illness as in physical illness, but just sick in the head stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that, that runs through in, in that place. You know, it's got a it's got a violent secret, and the the things people will do to maintain those secrets are, are pretty pretty harsh. So it's got it's set in New Zealand. It has all that thing, but oh, it just made me so squirmily uncomfortable. The best kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's to the sea by Nikki Crutchley. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Brilliant choice. And again, we don't get an awful lot of kind of Kiwi, New Zealand kind of book choices. So it's brilliant to get a different selection of books on, on the podcast this time around. Yes. So awesome. So do they have to be in the crime genre? No, okay. it can be any genre you want. Okay. So <laughs> I, 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 I've had I've had historical manuscripts and we're, we're yeah. you know, self-help books before. So go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, – the second book I want to talk about is one also a bit like uh, the Elizabeth Peters books, one that mm. I read when I was in my mid-twenties and sort of you know, heading towards 30. And um, that was the Diana Gabaldon book, Cross Stitch it was called here. Um, I believe in some countries it was called Outlander, which was the very first book in her series that was then made into the television series um and one of the reasons why this book just resonated with me so much was um her main character claire at that stage was of similar age to me so you know you can really i could really identify with her as a character and i as someone coming from a slightly medical background um in the Outland or Cross Stitch book, um, Claire is a nurse in the World War and she is um, transported through time, through stone circles <laughs> in Britain, <laughs> back to to Scotland. Um, and so here is this almost modern day woman having to try and survive and live in this totally different and quite brutal environment. Um, and yeah, she, she finds her place there and finds... Um, love but it's never it's always awkward and it's never easy but it was a really pivotal book for me and it um just because of the way I resonated with her I mean I went to the extent oh and it does involve swords so hello Uh, (laughs) (laughs) but I even went to the extent of um because I read this book I um went and got horse riding lessons (laughs) (laughs) Not saying that books can be influential or anything. Um, and, and just, you know, just tried some different things in, in life. So I I probably you know, still can't tell you to this day why it affected me so much, but it certainly did. And I went on to enjoy all the books in her series. Um, but also huge credit to Diana's writing as well. It's just such a gripping story of this. Again, um, like Amelia Peabody, uh, really in intrepid intelligent brave brave woman 
I like strong woman characters. So before we go on to your third and final choice, let's talk a little bit about your series. Hmm. So Sam Shepard is your strong female character. Yes. Um, so where did the idea for her character come about? And was it always expected to be a series for, for your real books? When I first wrote Overkill, I had initially thought in terms of, it was always going to be detective fiction, and I had thought in terms of a male detective. And I had started writing the novel from the perspective of a, um, a male detective, but it just wasn't gelling for me at that time, and I just couldn't find the voice properly or anything like that. And um, my husband did something really dumb that one day, and I thought, oh, my God, I can't understand the man I married. How on earth do I think I can write a novel from inside the head of a guy? So I <laughs> turned around and I go, okay, let's try this first person from a woman. And as soon as I did, it was like Sam Shepard arrived fully formed, full of sass, and romped her way into my life, and she's been there ever since, being annoying. So um, <laughs> it was just one of those those flipsh things. Um, and as far as the character's concerned, like I said, that she's an amalgamation, I think, of you know, so many things. Woman of Red, there's little bits of my mum in there. Um, people always ask, oh, is Sam you? But she's She's not me. Um, I'm actually more like the other character in the book, Maggie. But Sam shares my optimism. Uh, I think one of the things about Sam's character was she was like my little personal protest to the the bitter male detective trope that seemed to be there very predominantly at the time where all the detectives seemed to be, you know, middle-aged divorcees who are alcoholics and you know like right. jazz music <laughs> <laughs> so right. yeah so she was kind of like my my protest to that I wanted someone <laughs> who was younger and you know still optimistic at the beginning of their career um, who was ambitious but who worked you know was very empathic and was a bit of a um, fighter for the underdog <laughs> So for people who might not have read your series before, tell me a little bit about Overkill, the first book in the series. Well, the first the first book in the series, Overkill, um, it's set in the small town of Mataura, which is a, a real town that is a, about one and a half, two hours south of Dunedin, where I live now. And Dunedin is the city where the other books are set. And... Mm. In that book, Sam Shepard is you know, early days in her career. She's a sole charge police constable of a small town. Um, and the uh, body of a young mum is found in the Matara River. And so Sam has to you know, investigate what happened to her. You know, everyone thinks that it's a suicide, but you know, Sam's not so sure. With the added complication that the woman who has been found happens to be the wife of her ex so she has a very personal stake in there as well and some um, difficult relationships that she has to negotiate along that investigation. And small towns, you know, they're great because everyone knows your business, but, oh, my gosh, they can hide a secret if they have to. So there are, again, <laughs> dark secrets in that small town. It's like midsummer. It's, there's always something going on in midsummer. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, at least in Matara they didn't kill a person a week and then bust more poor victims in. <laughs> <laughs> what was the aim of moving it to a different place into the second book and the rest of the series? Did you, was it a decision you wanted to go with from the start or was it more kind of as you kind of started writing the second book, you wanted to try and change it? I felt once I realised that I was going to be writing a series, that um, Sam as a character needed a series, I knew immediately that we had to move away from Matara. She pretty much burned her bridges there in Overkill, but also because she was ambitious and I wanted her to aspire to being a detective and to be able to do that, she needed to move elsewhere than what she was. So Dunedin was the nearest big smoke, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> um, interestingly, when I did start writing that book, I didn't live in Dunedin at that time, which I do now. Uh, and just through life, we ended up moving here, which was kind of weird. But um, Dunedin, to her, also presented opportunity for promotion. But also for her, she was coming to this city with you know, new eyes, fresh eyes, in a in a place where she was you know, 
coming to a bigger city, but also coming into um, an organisation and a large workforce, police force, where she was a very small cog and a very large wheel and a very large um, patriarchal wheel as well. So she had quite a few battles ahead of her, which is part of the charm and allure of Dunedin. And Dunedin as a city uh, is a great place to dump bodies and murder people. Um, it's a beautiful combination <laughs> of old architecture and the modern. It's a university city here. Physically, it's it's stunning. It's um, a, a hilled and round a harbour and it's got the Pacific Ocean on one side. And as a physical environment, uh, it was a great place to set these stories as well. And obviously, um, Sam's character has a lot of uh, things happen to her and <laughs> uh, yep. for, throughout, throughout the series. And that gets up, up to the brand new book, Expectant. So yes. in this one, Sam is, is pregnant um, and is targeted by another killer, I'm, I'm assuming, from, from the right of this one. So I haven't actually had, I've managed to get through most of the book yet. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little about, bit about the brand new book and kind of where we are. Without spoiling too much, we're, we're, how we got to this point. So um, over the course of the series, Sam has investigations and things that she's um, undertaking, but also across the course of the series, she um, she finds love, um, although she is a total commitment phobe and is <laughs> 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 up and down on that front. But um, yeah, she and Paul, her partner, who is also a detective, um, they find themselves in a situation where you know Sam is expecting their first child. Um, it was not planned, <laughs> but <laughs> this is this is what life throws at you sometimes. And one of the things that I also wanted to portray with Sam as a character is that you know, she's a normal person. She, I wanted to to have to deal with um, things that we do, you know, having children and family and juggling that kind of life and in, in the future novels, juggling work and family. But in this novel, she's very heavily pregnant. In fact, she's only like a couple of weeks off going on maternity leave when a mm. horrific murder occurs in Dunedin where um, a heavily pregnant woman is um, murdered and then they discover that actually she'd been um, murdered and her child had been removed from her. So it is a pretty gruesome um mm. Murder. Sorry, people, but uh, <laughs> I will say I will say they've they've heard worse in this podcast. Okay, no oh, that's good. That's good. Um, and so for Sam, it's it feels very personal because you know she is in this exquisite. She understands the vulnerability of being so heavily pregnant, um, and all the change and everything that that's going to bring to her. So she takes this quite personally and is determined to try and solve this case. But also because she is on um, light duties, as it were, her boss is making sure that she's. Um, out of everyone's way, <laughs> as well as harm's way. Uh, mm -hmm. She's having to try and do this without being able to actively get out. You know, she's pretty much desk duties, but trying to investigate this this uh, murder. But in the investigation of it, it puts her in harm's way in its own right. So, da da da. Awesome. So that is out now through Arenda Books, who is amazing in, in the world of crime over here. So I'm so glad that a lot of your books are Arenda. Oh, I'm um, so proud to, I'm so thrilled to be an Arenda author. Honestly, Karen does an amazing yeah. job. And yeah. she, she, she's amazing. She, she's such a lovely person as well, <laughs> which makes it a lot easier to, to sort out things like these interviews. So. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So that is um, the Sam Shepard series. Go and check out um, the brand new book, Expectant, or go start from the start of the series. There's so many books in the series to try, and also Vanna's got her, another standalone book called Faceless as well, so it's always worth a try. So, before we get on to what you're on to next, we have to ask, what is your third and final bloody good read? Okay, so my um, third bloody good read is, again, I have to pitch for the Kiwis. Can't help myself. You've given me a platform. I shall preach. No, not Go quite. <laughs> but um, the, the other book is um, a book called uh, Better the Blood by Michael Bennett. Uh, and this is a detective um, story, and it's set in New Zealand. And um, it's... I found this a fantastic read because um, it really, really juggles 
what it's like for um, a Maori woman detective sort of living in two worlds. So um, she's having to juggle single motherhood and being Maori within the police force when um, there's a lot happening and people resent, and a lot of Maori people resent um, the police themselves. But she's also having to track down a um, what they're looking for, potentially New Zealand's first serial killer. And so she's got two years of her experience there trying to track down this person who um, is linking their crimes to the, you know, the killer is living in the past and almost seeking revenge, as it were, on crimes from the past that were a result of colonisation in the country. So it brings in a lot of political elements as well, a lot of talk about colonisation, um, as well as having this, you know, really incredible character who you can, again, you know, I can just really, really relate to her and the internal battles that she's having to have with family and um, finding herself, her, her identity and where she sits in the world too. So um, highly recommend that. So Michael Bennett, um, who is the author, he uh, comes from a background actually of documentary filmmaking. And so his descriptions of things are quite, you know, how he describes the landscape and everything is almost quite filmic as well. So it's beautiful, beautiful writing and this um, yeah, amazing story that just feels so very New Zealand. Awesome. Three really brilliant picks. I do like a bit of a bit of different crime fiction than I've, than I've heard of. So I will be checking all of these out. And also another, would you call it historical, your second pick, or would you call it more fantasy? Um, gosh, I I've never been good at labelling genres. <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> so, <obviously. laughs> well, I will just call it awesome. Awesome. So a, a second awesome pick and, and two amazing crime fiction <laughs> novels. Yeah, brilliant. So, uh, what are you working on next? Is there another Sam Shepard book in the works, or are you looking at doing a more standalone? Um, so I'm currently writing a, another Sam Shepard book. Um, so, and uh, again, this one is set in Dunedin. Um, she has back in the workforce now, just after maternity leave. So, you know, it does pick up fairly soon after um, the um, expectant. And so having to not only you know, solve a, a crime that is very, very much, you know, a set, a Dunedin, Dunedin-centric could only happen here kind of a thing um, but also just you know juggling that first bit of going back into work when you've got a a, a baby and a trying to mm. balance life in that period of time and you know it gets me thinking back to that time it's like oh my gosh you're sleep deprived you're trying oh, <laughs> you don't know whether you're uh, Arthur or Martha <laughs> and Mount Laundry just won't go away <laughs> so <laughs> And also, you know, she's got to tip through, again, tip to toe through how um, you know, ha having a child changes relationships, you know, through the you know, the theme of the books, you know, she has this little slight, slightly scratchy relationship with her mum, you know, there's all sorts of interesting things that I'm going to get to play with at the moment, so I'm enjoying writing that. Brilliant. So that is Expectant. Go pick it up now. It is now out, um, which is rare for this podcast. Normally it's beforehand. So <laughs> go and pick up a copy today and go and pick up Overkill um, if you want to start from the start of the series. Thank you to Vanda for being on the podcast this week. Um, where can people find you if you'd like to be found? Oh, well, I have a website, vandasimon.com. I am on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll get to see an awful lot of my tea trays. One of my little writing rituals <laughs> is that I like to make a proper tea tray with flowers and frilly teacups and, pot and teapots and make, make things all pretty. Um, I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> awesome. I'll put links in the in the description below as well. So go and follow Vanna because the, the books are amazing. So go go and check them out today. Um, as always, a huge shout out to my sponsor, Bonwell Book Club. They're the UK's best and biggest UK horror thriller books box service, bringing the wonders of a haunted bookshop straight to your door each month. 
you have got the two boxes. You've got the Full Guts box, which is a brand new book, possibly a haunted second hand book, and another indie title in there as well. Uh, you also get UK snacks, some drinks, some little bits and pieces like badges, sometimes bags, bookmarks. There's some amazing stuff in there. Uh, it's, it's my most favorite thing I get each month. So you won't be, you won't regret getting it. But you can always use the. the you can always use the code Bloody Good Reads at checkout and get 10% off your box as well. Go and check them out. They're amazing. Description below will have the link. Go and do it now. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Bloody Good Reads, uh, on Instagram at Bloody Good Reads, and over on the Bloody Good Reads book club as well on Facebook. I should really say Facebook. And even come follow me on, on the Slasher app as well. Um, quite new to it. I probably won't put, won't put much on there, but come and send a friend request over um also come and check out the monthly podcast that we do on the other side of here so it's bloody good screen this is our movie podcast where we review two movies a month it's myself chloe marcus and now giving our ex- extremely grumpy thoughts on a lot of bad movies as it has been recently <laughs> hopefully some good movies coming up you never know um and also our b movie podcast as well which is me and hunter shay um author extraordinaire author slash and of misfits as we talk b movies that the others don't want to do um go and check out the website as well um kira has been reviewing a lot of books for us recently and God, she reads quick. So <laughs> there's been a lot of reviews on there recently. So go and check out some amazing horror, some amazing splatterpunk. And uh, yeah, as always, I've been your host, Mark Goddard. Thank you for listening. Give us a five star if you're enjoying the podcast. And I'll see you next time. You ever heard about Shady Pines? Research place out by Borden. The guy running it goes insane. Locks everyone inside. Sets the whole place on fire. Burns them all alive. What does that have to do with the game? The game is Shady Pines. Good, I, I was scared there for a second with the lightning and the creepy murder ghost game. Just pause it. There is no pause. There is play or do not play. I stop playing, clock starts ticking. What, you have to play until you beat it? Exactly. Tim's missing. You think it has something to do with the game? Yes. No, it's just a game. How does it know who's playing? Ghosts. It's not ghosts. And what is it? The timekeeper is always watching. The timekeeper doesn't exist. Fairchild says the people he worked with called him the timekeeper. Fairchild is dead. He takes your days. He takes your nights, and then he takes your life. He's always watching. Everyone who plays this game dies or disappears. It's just a game, G. I thought I was the only one at risk because I was the only one playing, but now I don't know. We need to get to Shady Pines and get the server back on. We have to destroy it. No one else can ever play. If you don't play, you die. And if you do play, you die.